Hey everyone, welcome back to Code of the Row. Today we're diving into one of the fantastic features of Unreal Engine 5's gameplay ability system. So I'm going to be showing you how easy it is to edit variables in your gameplay abilities and have those change automatically inherited by any child classes. So this is a powerful feature that can save you tons of time and help your game development workflow efficient and organized. So I'll head over to my content and go to my abilities or my spells folder and open my GA spell. And in one of our previous tutorials, we just made this shoot a simple lightning bolt. And that's pretty much all it did. But what if I wanted to make this modular and have multiple animations shoot different types of spell using the same animation? So what I can do over here is when I head over to class defaults, you'll see that I have my ability tag, my block ability, and so on. But in my gameplay ability spell, I've actually just set the montage that I want to play it. Another thing that I can do is just right click and promote this to a variable called montage to play and just leave it at that. And now when I hit compile and go to my class default, you're going to see under the default section, there's now a montage to play. And I can select whatever montage that I've created in order to just play that ability. Just make sure that you have that anim notify to tell it when to actually shoot that ability like so. So now on event to activate ability, it's going to play this montage that I set as my class default over here, the AM spell attack. And it's going to wait for this gameplay event to actually do this and spawn an actor. What I can do instead is just right click and promote this to a variable and I'll just call this spell actor class like so and I can hit compile and then I'll commit the ability cooldown and I'll end my spell after the animation is complete on blend down interrupted and canceled and it'll play a print string to let me know that the ability ended. So now when I go to my class default you're going to see that I can select a spell actor class from here and a montage to play. But another thing that I can do is I can actually just open up where my GA spell is and I will just actually create a child blueprint class of this and call this GA underscore spell child for this example and open this up. So I don't need to do anything, but I can just change whatever montage I want to, but I'll keep it as am spell attack because that's the current one with that spell event or the anim notify with the spell dot attack. And from here, I can call another spell actor class. So I'll just duplicate this BP Thunderball and just make one for fireball and quickly just change this particle system from the Thunderball to a fireball. And I'll hit compile and save. I'll leave the projectile movement the same. And now over in my spell child, I can just change this ability tag to something like spell.fire. So let me go ahead and add that. So I'm adding spell.fireball to my default gameplay tag.ini, like so. And then I'll just select that. And then I'll change this block ability tags with the bell.fireball just so we can't multicast it. And then I'll hit compile and I'll change this spell actor class to that BP underscore fireball that we created like so. And that's all I need to do in my child spell uh, for my spell child. And I can of course change your cool. You can also change your cooldown from the gameplay effects that it comes from and pretty much modify this as much as you need to. And now you don't have to do anything in the event graph because since this is a child of your GA spell, it'll automatically do all these things that we set it to. And by adding these variables montage to play and the spell class itself or the class itself, it will automatically just, we can actually just pull this from our child like so in our class defaults. And now this is all we need. And now we just need to add this to our character and then we can actually just use this. So I'm gonna head over to my BP third person character. And after my add mapping context, I'm just gonna add this ability class GA spell child that we created. And then from debug key five, I'm gonna to try to activate the ability and I'll just do by class uh, for the purpose of this tutorial. You can do by tags or whatever is easier and more organized for you. And I'm just gonna select that GA spell child and then I'll hit compile and actually just try this out. And now when I click five on my keyboard, it's going to be shooting out that fireball. And when I click F on my keyboard, it's going to shoot the lightning ball. So now I have two different types of spells. And of course, you can just change the montage and pretty much create another montage with a different animation and still have this anim notify spell attack. And that's a pretty simple, modular and scalable way to set up your abilities using the gameplay ability system. So pretty much with gameplay ability system, it is the initial setup that will take time, but Scaling it and making it modular is really the beauty of our gameplay ability system and just making it so much easier to use different spells. So I can easily just duplicate this and I'll just call this AM spell two attack, for example. And then I'll just change the animation to something like um, something like this. Uh, it's probably going to look kind of dumb, but it's OK. I'll just make the end time a lot shorter and the beginning time a little later, just so it jumps into it. And now I can hit control save. And as long as I have this anim notified that I created that has this spell dot attack, it's gonna work flawless. So now when I go back to my GA spell child, change it to spell two attack, and I'll go to my 
game and click five to play that fireball, it's going to play that same animation that I selected for my animation montage. And it's going to have that three second cooldown because by default, when I duplicated my Thunderball, it already had that three second cooldown ability for this spell. And yeah, really simple, really easy. Thanks for watching Coded Row. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.